Amen. This morning during the first service, I heard the Holy Spirit say this. He said, wait on me. Wait on me. You realize that when you wait on somebody, what you're doing is you're putting value and worth on them. Okay? In between services, I was meditating further on that, and I, and I had this thought, you know, if someone said, you know, I'm going to meet you, you know, uh, on this certain day, and at a certain time on a certain day, and, and you're there, and after about 10 minutes, they don't show up, depending on how important that person is, you might go, forget this, and you'll go on your way, Right? But if that person says, listen, I'm going to meet you on a certain date, you know, like the last day of the month, I'm going to meet you, and um, I'm going to give you a million dollars, and um, he didn't even tell you what time of the day he's going to meet you, okay? He just tells you the location, I'm going to bring you a million dollars, and you know that there's validity to the fact that he will bring you a million dollars, you will be there at 12.01 a.m. and will wait until 11.59 p.m., Okay? Why? Because of the value of it. We need to put value upon the Lord. Yes. Our, our lack of willingness to wait for him proves just how little value we have for him. Oh, hello. And I'm not talking about just church services. I'm talking about our personal life. In fact, I'm talking more so about our personal life. Hello? We need to put value back upon the Lord. And, and a lot of it comes back to the fact that we really, many of us don't have faith in God. Many of us just believe in God. Big difference. In fact, in this series, did I tell you where to turn yet? Some, I, I probably did. Some of half of you are saying no, though. So Matthew chapter 9, okay? And um, in this series, let me just, I'm just going to lay some groundwork this morning, and then we'll pick up on it in two weeks, because next week we've got God and country, and, um, and we'll talk about that a little bit later on, too. But um, let me just lay some groundwork. In this series, in this series, I hope to address several questions, This not reserved to just these questions, but several questions I hope to address. Um, the first one being this, is it enough to believe in God? Is it enough to believe in God, or must one have faith in God? Is there a difference between believing in God and having faith in God? I'm actually going to address this for a few moments this morning, I think. Okay? And if so, what is the difference? Because, listen, we live in a, in, in a day and age, in America especially, that, you know, do you believe in God? Or they believe in God? Well, who gives a squat? Okay? If believing is not enough, then we need to move from believing to having faith. Amen? Why, it, why faith? Why, why, why faith? Why is it such a big deal? What's the big issue about it? Help me out, sweetie. What's the big issue? Why faith? Okay? And, and what is faith? We're going to define what faith is. Now, I know some of this is, is very basic and fundamental, but I think we need to come back to it and establish some things. Okay? And what's the connection between faith and faithfulness? I want to deal with that. Is there? Yes, there is. There's a huge connection between faith and faithfulness, all right? And then what are the benefits of faith? There are tremendous benefits that come your way when you begin to operate in faith. I want to, I want to address how can I prove my faith or how do I prove my faith and do I need to even prove my faith? And if I do, then who and to when? When is it required? And to whom, whom? Do I need to prove my faith? I think we spend way too much time trying to prove our faith to one another instead of proving our faith to whom it really matters. Okay? Talk about how do I develop and increase my faith. We're going to spend a lot, about, a lot of time on that because I want us to grow in faith. I want us to be faith people. Not goofy people, not, you know, whatever. I, I want real faith people. Okay? And then, and then um, lastly, but again, not limited to just this, I want to, what's the difference between faith and the gift of faith? See, one of the gifts of the Spirit is faith. So what's the difference between faith and the gift of faith? Now, listen, I don't know everything. I'm not going to pretend to know everything. Okay, I'm not Mr. Answer Man. But as pastor, it's my responsibility to disciple, to equip, and to train the saints. And so... If you even have any questions about faith that you want to address to me, uh, you can send it to my email address, pastorchrisco at gmail.com. Again, I'm not Mr. Answer Man. 
I'm not going to get in a debate with you. I'm not going to argue with you. I will say things that some of you are not going to agree with. Some of you grew up in the faith camp. Some of you grew up in, you don't even know if you believe in the gifts of the Spirit still in operation camp. Okay, we, we got a plethora of, of variety of backgrounds, okay? I'm not going to get into debates about things. I'm going to give you my understanding where I'm at right now in my journey, okay, of what God's Word says about faith. Understanding that a year from now is probably going to be tweaked a little bit. I hope I grow some more this year, okay? But, so I'm not going to go and get, I, I will say some things that's going to challenge you. I'm going to say some things that's going to make you angry. I'm going to say some things you're just going to downright disagree with. But if you do, I ask you at least give the Word of God a fresh look and see, okay, if maybe you might need to do some changing in your thinking, okay? So, um, <clears throat> but, but I, I want to establish, first of all, that faith must obviously be extremely important. Because Jesus, Jesus spoke a lot about it. In fact, Jesus gave a parable in Luke chapter 18, verse 1, um, to his disciples, um, encouraging them that they should always pray and never give up. Always. Now listen, if you've been in this journey called Christianity for very long, and if you're honest with yourself and with one another, you would have to admit that there are some times that your prayer life is more consistent, more active than other seasons okay we all have active seasons then we kind of get distracted and kind of whatever lose heart and not not as dependent upon the Lord and we you know and then we get fired up again and we get back on track and 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 Jesus said listen you should always pray and you should never give up and then he tells this parable about a judge who did not um he had no fear of God. He had no regard for man. And uh, there was a widow, though, that kept banging on his judge's chambers. She just kept on day after day. She would come and, and, and want him to declare justice for her. And after just constantly pestering him, he said this. He said, even though I don't have any fear of God and I don't care about people, he said, because this woman is wearing me out, any man understand that statement? This woman is slap wearing me out. Hello. I'm going to grant her her wish. I'm going to grant her her petition. And, and Jesus then ends that parable by saying, if the unjust judge would do this, when he doesn't care about man, doesn't care about God, if he would do this because of persistent knocking, how much more will your heavenly Father who cares about you and loves you will bring about justice? Okay, verse 8. I tell you, he will see to it that they will get justice and quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he even find faith on the earth? Isn't that an interesting statement? Isn't it interesting he, he, he said, you know, he didn't say, you know, will he find people who love him? Or will he find people who's devoted to him? No, he said, will they even find faith on the earth? Drew Smith texted me in between services. He had a great thought. He said, you know what? Not only is it whenever the Son of Man comes in the second return of Christ, but if he was to come to you today, would he find faith? If he was to visit you right now, in the now, would he find you functioning in faith? Or would he find you functioning in worry? You know, a lot of what we call prayer is really worry. You know, it's not really faith at all. It's, it's more anxiety being expressed in what we call prayers, okay? Would he find faith? Would, if he was to come right now into your life with the things that you're facing, would he actually find faith? But there's a huge difference, and I want to establish this this morning. There is a huge difference between believing and having faith. See, I'm convinced that many, especially in America, believe, but very few have faith. Many believe. There are many right now who are sitting in church buildings all across our nation who believe in God, but they're not really functioning in faith. See, you can believe, church, you can believe that something exists, but not place your trust in it. There's a huge difference. For example, I, probably the best way I can make it, Jamie, if you'll help me, probably the best way that I can say it is this, that I believe in the devil, but I don't have faith in the devil. 
There's a lot of people, they believe in God like I believe in the devil. Okay, I believe he exists, but I'm sure not putting my trust in him. I'm sure not going to rely upon him. See, to have faith in somebody or to have faith in something requires you to trust. It requires you to have reliance upon. And it requires an act of obedience, a submission to that person. If I, if I actually have faith in somebody, then I am going to do what they say for me to do. In fact, I even think that faith has very little to do with us convincing God to do what we want. It has more to do with us convincing ourselves to be obedient to what God wants. See, we think, when we think faith, I think generally, when we think faith, we think prayer, and we think, you know, having this, like, awesome ability inside of us to tell God, you know, what, what needs to be done, and, and, and he, he, he lines up with that, and we, we, can, we can pray for people, and they're healed, and, and, and we, we, that's our image of faith, but really, faith probably has more to do with trusting in him and in his decisions than it is in convincing him to answer a prayer a certain way. See, faith, faith, I see, I, I trust in who he is. I trust in his decisions, even when it does not make sense. I, 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 said, I said this week to the Jamersons and to the Joneses, and they may even be watching this morning, you know, they're proving their faith in God this week more than ever in their life. Why? Because for whatever reason that we don't understand, he did not choose to heal their daughter or their granddaughter. Now, that's when you know whether or not you really have faith in God. See, faith has to do with trusting him. I don't understand, but I trust you anyway. And I rely upon you. And I... And honestly, I think many of most Christians, and I put myself in this category unashamedly, but I think most Christians have more faith in themselves than they do in God. Because if you can get up one day and not completely throw yourself upon Jesus in prayer and say, Jesus, I must have you with me today. I must have you help me today. If you can get up and without throwing yourself at him, you can get up and go flippantly your way and go through the day, navigate through the day, maybe even a few days in a week, and then go, oh man, I haven't read my Bible, I haven't prayed in a couple of days, I need to do that. You know what you just did? You just proved you had more faith in yourself than you did in God. You just said, I don't need you today, I got this one, huh? I, got, I don't need to rely upon you, I don't need to trust in you, I got this day okay. But, but if you will, stay close by because I know every once in a while the world will throw something my way that I can't handle, that I don't have the ability to overcome in my own strength. And at that moment, if you wouldn't mind, Jesus, stay close by because then I'll tag team you. Your turn. See, we actually have more faith in ourselves than we do in God. And God wants us to come to a place where we truly, listen, not flippantly, I can do nothing without him. Okay, so listen, we say things so many times that, we, you know, it doesn't even mean anything anymore. It sounds really religious, but come on, are, are, are we saying it or are we living it? You know, I can do nothing without, I, I desperately need you today, Jesus, to make it through this day. But see, we need, we need to learn how to build our faith. We've got to move from belief to faith. Not believing that there's God, but actually recognizing I've got to put my trust, my faith, my reliance upon him. Um, and so the, the scripture says, and, and times the time, that things happen according to your faith. So it's important for us to learn how to build our faith, and we're going to talk about that later on down the road. But, but, but let me share with you one passage of scripture this morning, and then I'll just leave it there for you to chew on, Okay. And that's this. It's found in Matthew chapter 9, verse 27. Very interesting passage of Scripture to me because you see some stages that these blind men went through. In chapter 9, verse 27, there were two blind men. They came to Jesus. And it says that Jesus went on from there and two blind men were following him. And they first started off by calling out. We got to call out to the Lord. We got to cry out to the Lord. We got to they call upon his name. And they cried out and they said, have mercy on us, son of God. They came to a place where they realized, you know what? Um, we've been living for so many odd years, don't know how long. 
and we can do nothing about our blindness. We are blind. This is a condition that's way beyond us. But we hear about Jesus, the miracle worker, can heal the blinded eyes. And they start by calling upon the name of the Lord. And they cried out and threw themselves before him in mercy and said, would you please have mercy on us? It starts with us recognizing that we have to rely upon the Lord. And we've got to call to him. But notice then verse 28 says, and when he had gone indoors, the blind men did a second thing. They came to him. To me, that, that recognizes that's more than just lip service. That's more than just crying out. Listen, it scares me because, do you know why we even worship when we come together? We worship, first of all, to give him honor that he deserves. But secondly, we worship to build our faith. Because the truth of the matter is, and sorry for being, help me, forgive me for being so blunt, but the truth of the matter is, many of us, when we walk into church where our faith level is not very strong, because we haven't, been, we haven't been listening and putting our eyes in the right things. And, and faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And, 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 and so we come in here and we begin to sing scripture. We sing scriptural truth. We sing doctrinal truth. You know, um, our God is able to do this. And our God is awesome God. And whatever the statement might be. And as we're singing this, if you will be engaged, it will build your faith. Because all of a sudden, all the junk from the week begins to fall off, and you finally get geared in, you know. You get geared in, and, and, and you're hearing word, you're hearing the word in song. You're hearing proclamation, and it builds your faith. And then there's, and there's a unity that comes about, okay. And, and there's a combustion of faith. All right. And, and by the way, you don't have to wait till Sunday morning to do that. Listen, I'm getting ahead of myself. That's like three weeks away. But listen, but, but listen, they came to him. They went, be, but here's the part that scares me is when you begin to sing those declarations and you're not engaged. You just, you just, you, you, you just went into auto mode. I'm, I'm familiar with that song. I like the tune. It's really a cool tune. It feels good to sing it, you know. How many of you realize you've got to fight that kind of stuff? You've got to fight it. You've got to be engaged. You've got to bring your soul in line and say, Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that's within me. I'm going to bless his holy name. And, and I'm engaged into the words that are being proclaimed through the songs. And I'm thinking about the truth of them and the reality of them. He breaks every chain. Yes, he can break that chain off my life. See? You've got to be engaged. But, but if, if you do that, then, then what it does is it, it, it has a counterproductive um, uh, effect in your life. Okay? And, but, but, but see, they went beyond just singing. They came to him. They came. They presented their case to him. They came to him. They didn't just give lip service, but they put some action to it. And he said to them, he said, do you believe? He starts with belief. He says, do you believe that I'm able? Every one of us in this room would say, yes, I believe you're able. Right? I believe you're able. He says, do you believe I'm able to do this? And they all proclaimed a public confession. Yes, Lord, we believe. But then he takes them to the real step. It says in the next verse, it says, and then he touched their eyes and said, according to your faith. In other words, according to the level of faith that you are operating in, it's going to be done to you. That's the reason we've got to build our faith. And obviously they had faith. They had complete faith at that moment because it says, and their sight was blind. See, it's according to our faith. Now listen to me. Don't be one of those idiots, and I mean idiot, who goes up to somebody who's got a battle with cancer and say to them, you're not being healed because you don't have enough faith. You are an accuser of the brethren. You are being used by the enemy to heap condemnation upon someone who's already with a huge battle. Let's be honest with one another. Isn't it easier to believe for somebody else's healing than it is for yourself? Isn't, isn't that true? So if you really believe that statement, then you need to have faith for their healing. 
By the way, the guy was paralyzed, Shane pointed out. He saw the, the paralyzed man's friend's faith and healed him. So if you, if you believe it all depends upon your faith, then you have faith. Don't put heap and condemnation upon somebody who's already in the middle of a battle. Okay? Because it not only depends upon your faith, but it also depends or is in accordance to his will. Hear me? I could give you several passages of Scripture and just go give you a couple and then we're going to close. 1 John chapter 5, verse 14 says this. This is the confidence that we have in approaching God. Can I, can I just say this? For years, I thought faith had to do with something that was inside of me. Something that I had to conjure up. I had to get this certain feeling. I had to get this certain, I had to convince myself that God liked me enough that he wanted to do this for me. Or I don't know. It was like faith was something that was dependent upon my ability. And, and I'm at a place now that it has very little to do with me and all about my faith and confidence in who he is. I am so convinced, I am so convinced that God is good that I could stand at a baby's funeral this week and say, in the midst of the funeral, God is still good. And he's still a healer. He still supplies and meets all my needs. This shakes not my opinion or view of who God is. Okay? Listen. Faith has more to do with, with your confidence in his ability to do what he said he was going to do and to take care of you. More than it does with you trying to get this certain feeling or conjure this thing up that you activate and then convince God to do. See, we, have, we can have a confidence in approaching God. I am convinced of this. Even though my grandson right now is in the hospital, he's been there for a couple of days, respiratory issues, okay? My God has my best intentions in mind. You hear me? Am I frustrated? Why is my grandson in the hospital again, you know, with respiratory? And he's going to be fine. He's off of oxygen this morning. Yay, Jesus. He'll be out by the end of the day, I, I declare. But, but the issue is... The issue is I'm convinced God's good. And because of that, I can come, I can approach him with confidence. I can approach him with confidence. I trust him. I love him. I adore him. You know what? People who have confidence in me and who love me and adore me, I love for them to come to my house. God loves for us to approach him. We can approach him with confidence, and if we ask anything according to his will, we know that he'll hear us. And we know that if he hears us, we will have the answer that we ask of him. But it's according to his will. Now, there's a couple of other passages of Scripture that I think is very important and interesting, and, and it's found in John chapter uh, 14. Look at verse 12. It says this, I tell you the truth. Anyone who has faith in me. See that? I have faith in him. Not faith in my ability to have faith. You see how it takes the pressure off of us? I have faith in him. Not faith in my ability to have faith. Anyone who has faith in me will do what I have been doing. He will do every, he will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father. Now watch this. And I will do whatever you ask in my name. Now, can I clarify that for you? That doesn't, listen, Jesus is not a magical name that we put at the end of our wish list. He is, he's not hocus pocus and then poof, we get whatever we ask. No, when he says you shall ask whatever, you shall ask whatever in my name, can I tell you, you can do that without even saying the name Jesus. See, we, we think we have to end all of our prayers in Jesus' name or else it wasn't effective. That is not true. 
What in his name means is in my, in, in, in my character, in my nature, in my desire, in my plan, in my will. You can ask whatever you want, and if it lines up with who he is, if it lines up with what he desired, it will be done for you. See, if, if, it, if it was just called, say the name Jesus, hocus pocus, you ask whatever you want, add Jesus to it, it's going to be yours. Hello. How many of you realize you don't want that? How many of you are so glad that God hasn't given you everything you asked for? I'm so glad I got my wife and not the first girl that I asked for. Hello, I was really upset with God when I didn't get her too. Hello. But listen, when, when, <laughs> whatever you ask in my name, whatever you ask in my character, listen, whenever somebody comes and tells you something that, you know, may, maybe has tremendous uh, importance to the future of something, you may ask, where'd you hear that from? Who told you that? Who told you that? And if it's some clown that, you know, just flaps the jaws all the time, you go, oh, you just totally discard it, right? But if you go, who told you that? And it was somebody with great credibility that knew what they were talking about on that subject and you knew that they were, you know, credible, you would, you would then act upon that advice, right? Everybody wants to know what Warren Buffett's doing, Right? In, in, in the financial world, right? See, so whenever he says in his name, can I tell you, Jesus has never missed it one time. Never missed it. He can be trusted. We can put our confidence in him. And whenever he says something, it is done. Hello. See, so whatever you ask in my name, he said, I will do that so that the Father may bring glory to God. I want you to understand the reason he answers prayer is, is not for your benefit, but for God's benefit. If you're aching in pain and, and, and someone prays for you to be healed in Jesus' name, God will heal you so that the Father would receive glory through your, your, your healing, not so that you would not have pain. I didn't say that as well as I wanted to. He doesn't alleviate your pain that's not his main purpose. Yes, he cares about you. He wants you to be pain free. But his first and foremost purpose is so that God would receive glory and honor. It's the reason it's so imperative that we testify and tell of the good things that God has done. Amen? Because when we give him credit for what he's done, guess what? He goes, man, I'm going to do that for Shirley because I know good and well Shirley's going to tell everybody. Right? But you get locked jaw and scared to tell what God has done for you. Guess what you're going to do? You just shut down future miracles. Oh, come on. That's good preaching right there. See, he says, I'm going to do this so that God, my Father, could receive glory through my name. And you may ask anything in my name, according to my nature, purpose, plan, blah, blah, blah. And it will be done for you. Nate and team come. John 16, 23. I close with this. Look what he said. In that day, you will no longer ask me anything. Um, in that day, you will no longer ask me anything. I tell you the truth. My Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. Now, Jesus is about to leave. They've never asked anything in Jesus' name before. And he said, until now, you've not asked, okay, for anything in my name. But asking you will receive so that your joy may be complete. I believe in God's going to activate our faith to newer levels. I believe God wants to release signs, wonders, and miracles in increasing measures upon the church. Not so that Rochester could get a name, but so that the name of Jesus could get the name he deserves. Amen. The name of God the Father could be glorified. But church, listen, we've got, to, we've got to move from just believing God to having faith in God. It's not enough to believe about him. You believe in Jesus? Well, good. You now qualify with the demons. Believing in God is not going to get you to heaven. If so, heaven's going to be filled with demons. And I'm telling you right now, they're not going to have any place there. We've got to put our faith in in God. Father, 
I am so thankful that you are trustworthy. Even when I don't understand, I know that you have a perspective that is infinitely greater than mine. You have an understanding that is infinitely greater than mine. Your ways are so much higher than my ways. But I want to make your ways my ways so that I can move up higher. Shama Rikiatai. And Father, I ask that you would help us not to put more faith in ourselves than we do in God. Help us, Lord, not just believe in Jesus. Help us to have faith in Jesus. For it is by faith that we are saved. It is according to faith that things are released. So, Father, I ask that you would help us with that. Before I move on, every head bowed, every eye closed. And saints, would you pray with me this morning? Two people accepted, put their faith in Christ in the early service. You're here this morning. You, you may have believed in God. You may even believe in Jesus. But you realize this morning you have not put your faith in Him. You've never surrendered to Him. You, you have more faith in yourself. You rely more on yourself than you do Him. And this morning you say, Pastor, I realize that maybe I just had belief in God and I, I need to put my faith in Him. Maybe you at one time had faith in Him and you've kind of drifted away and now you become Christian by name only, but not by exercise. This morning you say, Pastor, this morning I want to put my faith in Christ. I want to acknowledge that I need Him as my Savior, and I want to establish Him as my Lord. I want Him to be in control. You hear this morning you say, Pastor, I, I think I believed in God, but I want to have faith in God this morning. If that's you, I want you to lift your hand up real high all over, this, all over this building. God bless you, sweetie. God bless you. Others, say, Pastor, pray, pray, pray for me. I want to put my faith in God. God bless you, ma'am. Others, God bless you. You can put your hands down. So I, I, I need to do more than just believe in God. I, I need my faith to be in Him this morning. Anybody else? 